Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about hepatic stigmata or the signs and symptoms of liver disease. To begin, one of the most commonly known signs of liver disease is jaundice. Now jaundice is due to hyperbilirubinemia. Now bilirubin is a breakdown product of heme catabolism and normally the liver deals with the bilirubin and it actually will excrete the bilirubin in bile, but if the liver is not functioning properly, bilirubin can start to accumulate, leading to hyperbilirubinemia, and bilirubin tends to bind to elastin, and elastin is found in our skin, and that's why we get this yellowish hue in our skin. Now, a related sign of uh, liver disease related to jaundice is scleral icterus. Now, scleral icterus is you can think of it as a jaundice of the sclera or the whites of your eyes. The whites of your eyes become yellow. And this is again due to hyperbilirubinemia. And again, there is actually elastin in your sclera of your eyes and the bilirubin binds to the elastin. And this is actually one of the first areas to display yellow staining. It is one of the first areas to display or to signal an issue with the liver. Now another hepatic stigmata is ascites, and ascites is a collection of fluid within the abdomen, and it is due to hypoalbuminemia. Now albumin is a highly abundant protein within our blood. This protein is actually produced in the liver, so the function of albumin in the blood is to lead to colloidal pressure and actually draw interstitial fluid back into the blood. Now if the liver is not functioning properly. We do not get albumin produced in enough quantity and this actually leads to hypoalbuminemia which actually leads to a decreased or reduced ability of the blood to actually pull back a lot of interstitial fluid back into the blood and we see large accumulations of fluid within places like the abdomen and also we see places like the periphery um, and this is why we see peripheral edema as well. We get a fluid accumulation because we do not have enough albumin in our blood to pull back some of that fluid, some of that interstitial fluid. Now another stigmata of hepatic disease is bruising and bruising is due to a decreased level of clotting factors. Now, uh, there's several clotting factors that are produced in the liver, and when the liver is not functioning properly, we see a decreased production of these clotting factors, which leads to bruising. The next sign or symptom of liver disease is puritis, and puritis is due to retained bile acids. Now, puritis itself um, is actually itching, and what we see is that because of um, instances where there is cholestasis, there is not um, adequate excretion of bile because of some problem of cirrhosis or uh, some mass in the liver which is suppressing or reducing secretion of bile, we get this retained bile acids. These retained bile acids cause this sensation of itching and this is why we get puritis. These patients often get excoriations as well from itching so much. Another stigmata of liver disease is palmar erythema. A palmar erythema is simply a reddening of someone's hands and it typically, or the palm of someone's hands, and it typically affects the hypothenar border, the, the area opposite to the thumb and um, in this picture you actually see here where we see a large reddening in the hyperthenar area. And pulmonary erythema is not only associated with liver disease, it's also associated with other conditions. And one of the other conditions we, we see this in is uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Another one is purpura. Now purpura itself is simply red uh, little spots. And um, you might hear petechia, uh, you might hear of purpura or ecchymosis. They're all just, just um, the similar red spots, but in different sizes. And now purpura or petechia is due to or related to thrombocytopenia. And thrombocytopenia is just uh, lower than normal levels of platelets in the blood. And a lot of times platelet um, suppression in liver disease is secondary um, 
uh, to a splenomegaly. So in liver disease, in cirrhotic liver disease, um, we or any other liver disease where it causes a portal hypertension, we see that there is a backup of of venous return from the spleen to the liver, leading to an enlarged spleen. And the spleen um, actually can take care of and degrade platelets and on actually red blood cells. And when we have a lar enlarged spleen, it can actually start to degrade too many platelets. We then get a thrombocytopenia, which can then lead to petechiae purpura in these patients. Another sign of liver disease is muscle wasting. And, and um, liver disease itself, a chronic liver disease, is a catabolic state, which leads to a lot of muscle wasting in different areas of the body. A lot of times you'll see it in the hands, and sometimes you can also see it in the temporalis muscles as well, on the forehead. These areas of um, the head can actually see wasting. Another sign of liver disease is xanthelasma. Now, um, xanthelasma itself is simply a, um, a buildup of, of fat around the eyes, and it's a yellowing kind of accumulation of fat around the eyes, and it's more um, related to cholestatic liver disease. Another one is bronze diabetes. Now, we call this bronze diabetes because of the discoloration in the skin. And this, um, you can see here in this image that you can see the, quite a difference in uh, the coloration of the skin in these patients. And bronze diabetes is known as bronze diabetes because of this, the discoloration. And it's associated with hemochromatosis, which is a genetic condition leading to an iron overload. They, these patients have high iron levels. And... It's called bronze diabetes because of the fact that these iron depositions, deposits of iron, actually occur in the pancreas as well, which leads to problems in insulin production and secretion leading to diabetes. So in these patients, you see not only a bronzing of their skin, but you can also see diabetes as well. Another hepatic stigmata is leukonychia. Uh, leukonychia is a whitening of the nail bed, you'll so you'll see. Um, normally, you'll see, it's usually pink or red, uh, but in these patients, you see a whitening of this uh, the nail bed, and this is related to hypoalbuminemia as well. Another stigmata is nail clubbing. And now, nail clubbing itself, um, you can see here these patients, their um, their fingers. You can see there's a a change in the angle of the nail in these patients. And nail clubbing itself seems to be related to hypoxemia. It's it's typically a sign of respiratory problems. So you can see nail clubbing in um, respiratory uh, diseases, but you can also see it in liver diseases as well. Now an interesting phenomenon you might see with liver disease is known as asterixis. And what happens is if you get the patient to put their arms straight out in front of them and put their hands up in the air pointed like in such a way like this as you see in this in this diagram here what happens is if you get them to close their eyes you will see that they will actually drop their hand and then they will immediately bring their hand back up and we call this a tremor flap and this tremor flap occurs at the wrist and it is bilateral so it happens in both hands and it seems to be related to um, any type of metabolic disease it doesn't necessarily have to be liver disease, but it can happen in other metabolic diseases as well, such as issues with the renal or respiratory systems. And the cause of asterixis is not entirely known. It seems to be due to an interruption of a postural pathway in the reticular formation, which leads to this type of tremor flap. Another stigmata of hepatic disease is caput medusae. And caput medusae is this kind of engorgement or dilation of veins near the umbilicus of the patient. So if you look at their abdomen, you might see this kind of engorgement of, of veins leading from um, near their umbilicus or their belly button. Um, and this is uh, more specifically a dilation of para-umbilical veins. And you'll see that it'll actually radiate away or radiate from the umbilicus. And Kappa Medusae itself is 
uh, a result of portal hypertension, leading to a backup of blood into these veins, leading to this engorgement of these paraumbilical veins. Another uh, sign that you might see with these patients is hepatomegaly, which is just an enlarged liver. We know that um, because if uh, in a patient with liver disease they can get vascular swelling inflammation, it actually leads to an enlarged or an increase in size of the liver. And this is how you can actually see these patients with an actually distended abdomen in a certain area in the right upper quadrant. You'll see this enlarged area of tissue and this is actually hepatomegaly. Another stigmata of liver disease is spider nevi and spider nevi are uh, simply just dilations of blood vessels and they kind of lead to a radiation of uh, vessels and this is why it's called spider nevi. It, it kind of resembles a spider's web or a spider and the dilation of the blood vessels is actually due to high estrogen. Now, normally the liver actually um, metabolizes and clears estrogen, but in liver disease, there is um, reduced clearance of estrogen, leading to higher levels of estrogen and leading to spider nevi or the dilations of these blood vessels. And this leads to another uh, stigmata of liver disease, and that is gynecomastia. It's... Um, in large breast tissue in males and this is again due to increased estrogen uh, due to reduced clearance of estrogen by the liver and now this is another um, sign of liver disease but it's not necessarily only um, due to liver disease it can be due to other other um, hormonal issues as well it can be due to increased estrogen just because of increased peripheral um, estrogen production but you could see this as a um, stigmata of liver disease. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on hepatic stigmata. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.